these basic objects-oriented concepts, and I explained them both um, kind of in terms of concepts and show, showed you also concretely how they look in a simple program. Um, for constructor overloading, I will explain it again. So what I want to do, I want to jump into methods and just remind you what methods are. If you recall, methods are nothing but functions. They just happen to live inside a class. If a function is defined inside the class, we call it a method. And the role of functions is to implement some computation. They do some work. Uh, typically, they, they may take some input, do some work. Within, while doing their computation, they might access some attributes. This is what's special about methods. They may, they may access attributes of, the, of the defining the class. If you recall the deposit, uh, the deposit uh, method, it takes an amount as an input, and, it, and then it goes to the balance attributes and add the amount to the balance. If a method does not return anything, we put a void. So this is the general syntax of how a method looks like. Uh, you put the method name starting with the lowercase letter, and you can put as many uh, parameters as you wish. And the way you define parameters is the type and the type and the, the parameter name, the parameter type and the parameter name separated by comma. And for the return, you put the return type. If the function, that, if the method does not return anything, you put the keyword void. Now this public um, modifier is used to, uh, to decide the visibility of the method. If you put pu public, or if you don't put anything, it's by default public, which means that the, the method can be used outside the class. If you put it as a private, then the method can only be used inside, inside the class. Yes, so we, we have seen this. I'm just trying to revise it quickly. And typically for calling a method, you first need to create the object, and then you go to the object and you say dot, followed by the method name, and you pass the parameters. We've seen this uh, in this example. So here I create Sarah's account, and then I go uh, to Sarah's account dot deposit, and this is how I call the method once I define it. Okay. Method visibility by default is public, as you, as you saw here. This is a public method, even though I didn't put public in front of it. But if I wish, I could put it public like this. It's more clear. Now, it, public means I can access it from outside this class, from code that is not in, inside this class. But as soon as I put it private, if I go back here, you will see I have an error here. It says this method uh, from type account is not visible because it is private, which means it can only be accessed within the class. Mm -hmm. uh, within the class is fine. If I want to call it, for example, let's say, let's say in here, if I want to say deposit and put here the balance, no problem. I have no problem here calling it. Although it is private, I am calling it. It's fine because I am calling it within this class. Yes, that's the difference between private and public. Private only visible within the class. If I want it to be visible even outside the class, I have to, uh, the common way is to explicitly mark it as public. Uh, this is very common. But if you want to save typing and you want to use the default, you can remove the public and it is by default public. It's clear this idea of public private. But the attributes are based on the principle of encapsulation are private. We put them private. We close our eyes and put them private. That's it, because of the encapsulation principle. Okay, moving on. There is now one little concept called static method. It takes a little bit of concentration to understand what this static method means. So let's take a look at this. Take a look at these two versions of code. In this line, what I'm doing in this line? 
creating an object called math from the class map. That's what I'm doing. Yes. And then what I'm doing in this second line, yeah. using this object math and calling the methods signed. And I give it this parameter 45. The signed should go ahead and do its work and return me the results. Yeah. And then what I do with this result? Yes, I store it in the answer variable. Yes? This is one way of doing it. The Java will not let you do this, but this is just a kind of th theoretically you can do it this way. Another way of doing it, I go to the class. Can you see here? Math, and I call the function. I call the method sign. Give it the parameter and get the results. Which one do you prefer? Second one. Why is it? Why do you prefer this one? One line, yes. Um, so that's basically the idea of a static method. What's the difference between these two versions? We created an object to access the class in the first one. We did not create one. Yes, that's the difference. So in the first version, before I, before I can call the method, I created an object first. Then I called the method on the object. That's version one. In the second version, what did I do? I call the method directly from the class without creating an object first. Yes? Okay. These methods that I can call directly from the class are called static methods. That's all. So let me give you examples. The example are the math class. Let me first fix this one. This one is now public. OK. This is now happy. Now let's go here. You see here the math class, it has many methods. Can you see, for example, ABS, um, cos, sine, and so on? So many. Now, you can see beside each of these methods, can you see the little letter there? S. Okay. What it means, these methods that are marked with S, I can call them directly. So if, I can, if I call this one, uh, let's say I let me just copy this. If I can, if I come here and call this method, uh, what what the output of this will be? Ten. Ten. Okay. So what I'm doing, this is a class, and I go directly and call this method without creating an instance first of math. If I if I go to the to the signature or the declaration of this method, if I jump there, you see here this method is is what is basically marked as static. What does what does this mean? Marked as static. When I mark when I come to a method and put in front of it this keyword static, what is the consequence of this? Sorry. Okay. Now, before we get into that, uh, just mechanically, once I come to any method and mark it as static, what's the consequence of doing this? Sorry? Can be used from the class without creating an object first. That's basically the consequence of doing this. So, let me try to explain it another way. Here it is. So, if I... You see here, in the uh, in Sarah's account, can I can I go to the account object? Sorry, the account class. Can you see here the account class dot deposit? Can I call any of the functions? Can I call any of the functions on the account class directly? No, no. I need to create an instance. I need to create an instance first and then call the method. Yes. Okay. Why? Because this ma this method is not static. Thank you very much. So they need you need to create an object first. Okay. Now for the math, look, look, take a look at the math class. Did I need to create a math object before using the func the methods in the math class? No. Okay. So basically, if you want if if you want to take it on the surface mechanically, if you want a method that you can access from the class without creating an object first. 
What do you need to do to that method? Make it static. Make it static. How do you make it static? Add the word static in front of the uh, in, in front of the what we call the, the method signature or the method declaration, the header of the method. In front of it, you put the keyword static. Now, when do you think is a good? It is a good idea to make a method static. In which scenario? There are very special scenarios where a method can be made as static. What do you think? Can I make, remember this deposit. Can I make this deposit, let me jump to it. Okay. Can I make this deposit static? No. Why? Because you need to add the, the certain amount to a specific account. Very good. Yes, very good. Thank you very much. Yes. Can you see here when I put this one as a static, mm -hmm. what happened? Then you can call this method without having any... No, but, but there is an error here. As soon as I put it static, the compiler is saying, oh, wait, you cannot make this a static because for you to call it, for you to call the deposit, mm -hmm. you need to have a, an account first, mm -hmm. which makes sense in the real world. Can you just walk into the bank and say, here's 500, please deposit it. Yeah. Deposit What is this? You first need to do what? Mm -hmm. Create an account. Then we can deposit, yes? Mm -hmm. So, which is... Uh, so, for a method to be static, what is the condition? What method can we make static? Maybe a method that doesn't have any parameters in something? No, it can have like the absolute, the ab ABS in math. Does it take, it take parameters? Yes, it takes. It's not uh, related to a specific account. Yeah. Yes, some method that does not depend on anything else. It only depends on the input that you give in the parameter. Like ABS, <laughs> absolute value. It does not depend on anything. It can do its work without depending on, on another attribute defining the class or depend on another method defining the class. It can do its work independently. Yeah? Then such method can be made a static. But if a method depends on other attributes, we cannot make it static. And this is a clear example. The deposit cannot be made static. Why cannot be made static? Because it depends on an attribute balance, and the balance is different from one account to another. So you must first create the object and then call the deposit on it. Okay? So it's a little bit, it might be a little bit confusing, but for now, just take it, uh, take it, uh, take it this way. If a method, if you have, a, if you happen to have a method, and this method can do its work independently, without relying or without making use of any attributes within the class, it only relies on the parameters coming to the method, then you can mark that method as static. What's the advantage of doing this, of marking the methods as static? You can call it directly from the class without creating the object. Is clear? Yes? So, and these such classes that have uh, such classes that have these type of methods, we usually call them utility classes. These are classes that just do some computation that we might use anywhere in our application. Um, just helper helper method that, for example, in this case, they provide us mathematical functions. We don't need to implement ourselves. We just call them directly. With convenience, with the convenience of not needing to create an, uh, an object first. Is the concept clear? Yes. Static methods. Static method is a method that doesn't depend on any other attributes of the class. It can do its work on its own without any depend. It doesn't have any dependencies, and it belongs to the class, which means. You can call it directly from the class without needing to create an object first. And the best example for such static methods is the math class. The math class, all the functions in the math class are static. You can call them directly without creating an object first. That's basically the, the idea of static methods. Yes? 
they make your code much more concise and uh, much clearer. We, you don't need to create a, an, an object first. And uh, as, I, as I, I illustrated here, uh, this is much more convenient than this one. Okay, but I only I can only afford to do this because this sign method is really independent. When they implemented this sign method, they took the textbook, went through what, how do we compute the sign, and implemented the algorithm. Okay, and then the, it doesn't depend on anything else. It can it can do its work on its own. Then yes, we can afford to make it static. But as soon as a method has dependencies on other attributes defining the class then no, we cannot make it static. That, that's the basic idea. Sorry? Yes, please. Why did they make the uh, input function static? Which input? Like system, if we want to take... Oh, okay, very good. Yes, even this one, yes, thank you very much, even this one. You, you see this one, this one, is, ha, this, this attribute here is a static. Yes. And then I can call this method on this attribute. You can see if I jump here, this is a static attribute. Yes. I can access it directly. The, the reason why, why do you think they made it static? First of all, it's for convenience. I don't need to first every, because this is heavily used, system.out.println, very heavily used in the program. So for convenience, instead of every time I want to do print line, I first need to create an object, then call it, they just made it much easier for us to just call it directly from the class itself. Okay. It's much more convenient without creating an object. Just go ahead and, and call the method. Second is I only need one, print, one object in the whole application. I don't need to create so many instances because when I am uh, running my program, only one routine at a time will be sending something to the screen. So only one instance is enough for the whole application. So that's another case where static methods are very, are very uh, um, valuable. So to write to, to write to the screen, I don't need a bunch of instances. I don't need to create so many instances of the output of the output object to to output to the to the screen. Only one object is enough for the whole application. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this way, they made it a static first for two major reasons. One is for convenience. Mm -hmm. One line, boom, and it get, gets what I want. Mm -hmm. Second reason, by mistake, we don't, uh, developers will start creating many <laughs> objects. Mm -hmm. Remember, when you create an object, what's the consequence of creating an object? It will take some memory location to create this object. Yeah? And if, if this object is heavy and has a lot of attributes, lots of method, it will consume lots of memory. Mm -hmm. So here, because they are giving us this, this convenient way, we are not in our program, we are not creating so many instances of the uh, of output to screen object. Mm -hmm. Only one instance is enough for the whole application. Mm -hmm. it's more, efficient. It, more efficient. Thank you very much. It's more efficient, more efficient and more convenient in terms of performance, more efficient, and for developer experience, more convenient. One line instead of multi lines. Mm -hmm. And not having every time, every time, in any, fun, in any method I want to create, I want to output something, I need to first create the object and then call the method. No, with static, I just call the method directly because it is static. Mm -hmm. It's clear? Uh, you can you can think like, you can think of them that way. Yes, you can think of them that way. But with the convenience here, uh, you are not declaring them. You don't need to declare them. That's another convenience. Much better than global variables. Uh, but this is a good point. Like this, this static methods and static uh, the static methods are available anywhere. Anywhere you wish to use them. Name of the class dot the, the the name of the method, and you you have you have it. That's it. You don't need to worry about how it how it is created, and uh, you, you don't need to worry about anything. You can think of it that way. It's available anywhere. You just call it, you get what you asked for. Yes, without going through the headache of creating an object first. Is clear? Yeah. Okay. So moving on. 
um, so I hope it is clear. Okay, so for static method, let me just try to explain it one more time. Static method belongs to the class rather than to the object, which means I can directly go to the name of the class, dot the name of the method, and call it, like math.absolute, ABS, math.sign or cos, and so on, okay? Now, this is just to further emphasize when a method can be static, when a method cannot be static. So we'll take another example of a car. Okay? So a car, uh, let's say when you want to describe a car in terms of attributes, you might have a plate number, uh, the brand, and the color, the mileage. You know the mileage, how many kilometers is that? Yeah. That's trouble. Okay? Now, Let's take an example of set mileage. You tell either miles or let's say kilometers. It doesn't matter. Um, so let's say you want to set the mileage. You have, a, you have a car and you want to set the mileage. Can we, can we make this set mileage a static method? No, because it depends on the car. Because each car will have its own mileage. And set mileage will access the mileage attributes of the, of the object. So this cannot be made static. Why cannot be made static? Because it depends on attributes defined in the class. And these attributes will belong to the object. Each object will have its own copy, its own version. Because each car has different mileage, different brand, different uh, plate number, and so on. Yes? Now take a look at the other method. Can you see here? Convert for miles per gallon to kilometers per liter. You know, when, uh, if you are in U.S. and somebody wants to tell you the efficiency of their car, they might say, my car travels, let's say, 50, km 50 miles or 50 miles per gallon. I'm not sure what's the correct value. Let's say 50 miles per gallon. If you are in Europe, they won't use this language. They will tell you, my car, with, if I put one liter, it gives me... Or if I travel one kilo, 100 kilometers, I, need, I consume 7 liters. Okay, so 7 liters, 7 liters gives me 100 kilometers. While in the U.S., they want to use this language. They will tell you one gallon gave me miles. So they use different units. Now, in here, this method, all it does, you give it the number of miles per gallon, and it gives you back, the kilometers, the kilometers per, per liter. All it's doing, what's this, the role of this function? Converting from one unit to another. So can we make this function yeah. static? Yeah. Yes. Why can we make it static? It doesn't depend on, any doesn't depend on anything within the, within, the, uh, within the class attributes of car. It doesn't access any of the attributes. It works exclusively by relying on what? on the input that we give it, and of course the algorithm that we will implement for converting from miles to kilometers. Is clear? The idea is clear? Yes? So, to summarize, the only case where we have, where we can make a method static is when that method does not depend on anything else. It is independent. It can do its work on its own, just by relying on the input, the input parameters we give it. It does not access any of the attributes defined in the class. Mm -hmm. It's clear? And what is the added value? What's the advantage of marking a method as static? No need to create an object. No need to create an object. And also, you ensure you don't need to create many instances in your application and waste memory. Just one instance in the whole application is enough. Mm -hmm. It's clear? Okay. So typically, such methods or such classes that provide the static methods only are also called utility classes or helper classes, such as the math class. The math class is one of the classes, utility class. In many, many cases in, in our implementation, we might need it. Okay? It does not belong to a particular, it does not belong to a particular, solving a particular problem in our application. It is generic. It can be used in many, many contexts, in many, many areas. Those are called utility classes. So utility classes 
typically the methods in utility classes are typically static because they usually the, these utility class methods are the independent. That's the that's the most useful case. Uh, the other case where we use static class when we static method, sorry, when we have something like comparing. You see here, I have here uh, compare of the most efficient car of. I have two cars and I want to compare them. So I give you the two cars as an input. So you just go and compare them, maybe compare them in terms of age or compare them in terms of efficiency of, of, uh, um, of uh, let's say, petrol <coughs> consumption or compare them in terms, of, uh, how, in terms of how many miles they have traveled. So in here I'm giving you all the inputs you need. Go ahead and compare. You don't need to go and you don't depend on any attributes of the car. You just depend on the input itself. So this method could be used, could be marked as static. So compare and sort could be marked static. The other case in Java, in Java itself, what we have is two major methods that are very well known as, as static. Of course, system out, this is a very well known static um, attribute that I, I can use to access the uh, print into the screen. Another one I showed you is the math class. All the methods in the math class are static. You can call them without, uh, without creating an object first. In fact, if I try to create an instance of math, it will not, it will not allow me. Because they even made the constructor as private. You cannot see the constructor which means you cannot construct this method. Mm -hmm. The only way to access the methods in this, in, in this class is um. by calling them directly. Yes, because all of them are static. Okay, the other case where there are a lot of static methods, you know these, uh, these, these data types here, mm -hmm. like int, float, double, uh, uh, no, string is not, is not a simple data type. Those are called simple, uh, data types. So if I come here and say x dot, there is no methods associated with this variable. Can you see it? Yes. Because this is not an object. This is a simple data type. Int, floats, double, boolean. Those are simple data types. String. Is a string a simple data type? Mm -hmm. No. String is an object. You see here, if I create here string name equal And then I go here, name, dot. You can see here, I have so many methods to call. For example, I can do to uppercase or to lowercase. Yes? So this is a class. This, this is a class, not an object. Oh, sorry, this is a class, not a simple data type. In fact, it's a class. You can see here, this is a class. Okay. Uh, but these others, this one is this a, is this an object? X is X is X an object? No, no, no. no, it's not an object. It's just a simple variable. And the reason and the the proof of this, when I do here X X dot, it gives me nothing. There is nothing to call because this is not an object. Yeah. But Java provides what is known as a wrapper class. So for each simple data type like ints, there is a class called integer. For double, there is a class called double. So what I want to show you here, see here, integer. This is called a wrapper class. And this wrapper class has a lot of static methods. Okay. For example, if I want to know the maximum value of int and the minimum, let me show you. If I come here and say, give me the maximum value I can store in an integer, and the minimum value, and the minimum value I can store in an integer, it will give it to me. Yeah. It can also give me not applicable print line. It's 
side is not applicable for argument int int. Ah, yes, yes. Okay. No problem. Yes, I get what you mean. No problem. I don't want to concatenate them because it will. I just print each one on its own line. Let me show you another one. Uh, if I go here, integer dot um, parse parse int. So I can give it a string. It can convert it for me to an integer. Okay. So what I mean here, for all simple data types. Java provides a corresponding class that has a lot of utility functions, and these functions are static methods. Most of them are static methods. Okay, that's another case in Java. Just an, another example where Java itself uses static methods. Okay, so if I run this, you can see here this is the minimum, this is the lowest value you can assign to an integer, and this is the highest value you can assign to an integer okay and I can I can access this directly from the class why do you think I can access this directly from the class because it's marked as static even attributes you can mark them as static what about this what about this keyword here final what does final mean in this context it just means this is a constant it's another way, like this is how Java makes a variable constant, which means it cannot change it, which means I cannot come in my application. In my application, I cannot come and come to this variable and change this one to one to whatever. You can use this it, in the normal, like if we want to make x constant, we just write final before integer. Uh, in here, let me see. Yep, uh, and then x equals, yep, so in here it's saying x cannot be assigned, because it's already assigned. But a convention, can you see here the convention for final variables, you make them all uppercase. This is the convention, yeah? And if it's multiple, uh, if it's a multiple words, you separate them by underscore. This is just a convention, you can call it the way you wish. But the convention in the Java that uh, constants are marked with the final keyword, and also they they are named they are named with uppercase if they are if they are composed name with two uh, like two uh, two nouns you separate them by an underscore. These are little little details, but of course they are important details. Is clear the idea of. Uh, um, the idea of static methods. Two major scenarios where we use them. We use them in utility classes or helper classes. Yeah. An example of utility class yeah. in Java is the math class. Mm -hmm. Another example where we use them is what is known as a wrapper class. What is a wrapper class? These are classes that correspond to basic data types. Like for example, we have an int class we have an integer, sorry, we have an int, an int simple data type. We have a corresponding integer. integer class. And this integer class provides some valuable methods, such as the most important one heavily used is if you have a string and you want to convert it to an integer, you go to the integer class and say parse int, and then it will convert it for you. Uh, let me see if there is something double. Same thing for double. Can you see here double? I have the double uh, here. I have double as a simple type, but double as a simple type does not have any methods, does not have any associated functionality. But there are some useful functionality related to double. So Java, what Java people did, they create a corresponding class for this simple data type. So for double, for the simple data type double, there is a class called double, and this class provide very useful methods, such as the most famous and the most widely used, what do you think will be? Convert integer? Yes, no, convert from string to double, which will be, what do you think the name will be? This one is parse int. Yes, it will be parse double. Can you see it? And you can give it a double value as a string. 
yeah, and it will convert it for you. Yes? Uh, it has also other uh, valuable things. Uh, for example, max, max value and so on. Let me see. Compare. Can you see here? Compare. You can compare. You give it two value, two double values. You can compare it for you, show you which one is the biggest, and so on. Max, min, sum, some basic ones. Uh, value of, that's another way of doing it. Um, you got the idea, yes? These are called the upper. classes. Upper classes. So these are classes that correspond to basic types, but this, because they are classes, they have associated uh, static methods that provide useful functionality. The most commonly used ones are parse method, parse static methods that come with these wrapper classes. For example, if you have a string and you want to convert it to an integer, how you will do that? You go to the integer class dot parse int, you give it the string, it gives you the integer. If you have a double at your hand in a string and you want to convert it to a double variable, you go to the double wrapper class and you say double dot parse double, you give it a string, it gives you a double variable. You got the idea, yes? And why they created these wrapper classes? Because the, the simple data types are special, ty uh, are special data types. They are not objects. These are the only ones in Java that are not objects. The rest is an object. Is clear? So I hope the concept of static is uh, clear by now. Not only you can have static methods, you can also have static attributes. And I showed you the example of uh, this one, for example, min and, min and max. This is an attribute, is marked, marked as static. Typically, these attributes, most of the time, they are, they are final, which means there are some constants. Uh, same thing in math. In the math class, they have a static one, static attribute. Let's say if you want the pi value, uh, a well-known constant in math. You need it when you're dealing with circles and so on. And here's the value. There's another one here, E. These are, cons these are attributes marked as static, and not only this, marks also as final. So you cannot change them. But you can read them in a very convenient way. What do I mean by convenient way? You can just go to the class, dot the name of the attributes, and you get it. Yeah, you don't need to create a, an object first. All right, moving on. Uh, okay, me now method overloading. We already seen this. You're already familiar with this from C++. What is method overloading? Yes, we have a function with the same name, but different parameters. And you can also have constructive overloading. I, I think... Uh, one of you asked about function, uh, constructor overloading. So let me explain it. Two birds, one stone. I will explain overloading in general. You can see here, overloading means same name of the function. In this case, same name of the constructor, but different parameters. Which means in here, what this means in this context, I can create a, an, an account object in three ways. I can create an account object in three ways. What is the first way? No parameters. No parameters. I know nothing about the account. I can still create a, an object and then slowly set the values in set, set methods. Yes? You can create an empty object and then set ID, set name, set balance, not set balance, deposit, and so on. Yeah? Uh, that's one way. The other way is this one is to create an, uh, an account for the rich people or the people who have some money in their, in, their, in, their, in their pocket already. They walk into the bank and they do it in one go. Create the account and initialize it with some, with some money initially. Okay? So this is the version we will use. Now, if somebody walks in, they don't have any money in their pocket. We still don't don't tell them, oh, go home, go to come back tomorrow. You need to get some money, some at least some hundred real and come back. 
No, no, we will not uh, kind of send them away. Instead, what we will do? No problem. Come in. We will create an account for you. But guess what? The balance will be zero. Yeah. So these are different versions of creating the account. It's just convenience. Convenience for whoever will use our, our class to create objects. They have many ways of doing it. Depending on the context or depending on the scenario, they will use different versions. Yes? Now, function overloading, uh, it makes learning. People, you, you are giving the people who will use your classes, they will, have, they will enjoy it more or they will uh, appreciate it more because you, don't, you are not overloading them with many method names. Let me give you an example. So, for example, here, although it's... Oh, let me put it in here. For example, what I have here, I, have, I will create a couple of methods here. Uh, public sum. And there is a sum that takes x and y. And it will return int, yes? Just to keep it simple here. And this will return what? x plus y. Yeah? And then I have another version. I have another version which is x, y, and z. In fact, I can call x and y and then add z. Okay. Yes? So, in here, the advantage of using this is that for me as user of your class, I don't need to learn many method names. I only need one method name, which is sum. If I have two numbers, I will call the first version. If I have three numbers, I will call the second version. How many methods do I need to keep in mind? Only one, sum. I don't need to learn so many methods, just one. But I am, I, uh, this one has multiple versions. The same method name have multiple versions. So learning the API or learning the interface of your class, learning the interface and the method of your class becomes much simpler for the users. Rather than having two methods, some two numbers, some three numbers, some, I need to learn all these names of, of methods. You see, overloading makes learning the interface of a class much easier. Is clear? Okay. Uh, now, let me try, let me put, you, put another trick here. Let's say I have here int result equals sum. And I have two numbers to add, so I will use the first version. But it's not working. It's complaining. What do you think the complain? I will not show you what the compiler is trying to say to us. I have the methods here, but I'm not able to access them. Okay, I think what I will do now, one bonus point in the midterm if somebody can explain what's going on. One bonus point. Okay, in the midterm. Again, what's going on? Okay, why I am not able to access this? Only one person. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, you need to explain it. You need to explain it. Yes. You are on the right direction. How can we fix it? I can't remove the static. By the way, the main must be static. Yeah. Why? Because it will not be seen by other uh, classes. No. No, you need to be careful. Static does not control the visibility. Who controls the visibility? Public, Public or private. private. So be careful. So static, what does it control? Yeah. Whether you need to create an object or not create an object. Mm -hmm. So the main is must be static because the poor operating system, when it comes to your program to start running, it does not need to create any object. It just goes home to the main and starts running mm -hmm. because it is static. You don't need to create an instance first. Mm -hmm. Are you following? Yeah. yeah. But because it is static, any other attempts? We cannot, we cannot. Sorry? Remove this? No, still, like, you can still hear, still not, not happy. Yes, please, another attempt. Maybe because there's a final double of value x? Sorry, which one? 
down, final double x, and you said that final is a constant, and up there in, in the... No, oh, no, 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 uh, no, 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 like, no. This x here and this x here, they have nothing to do with each other whatsoever. You remember the variable scope? This is a fundamental concept. Don't forget this. This is any programmer will have this for the rest of their life, variable scope. You remember what variable scope means? What does it mean, variable scope? Yes, please. Okay. So variable scope, this x is only visible within this function. It's not visible outside. This variable here, can I access it anywhere else? It's only accessible within this function where I declared it. So this x here and x here has nothing to do with each other. They, they don't see each other. They don't clash because they belong to different world. This first x belongs to the world of the sum function. Mm -hmm. And the other x belongs to the main function. There is no clash whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Okay? Any, Any attempts why? why it's not working? Yes, yes please. Uh, what was the for the next string in fact? Why it's not, it's not an integer? Which one? Here it is sum, yeah. 10 and 20. Yeah. Because this one is expecting 10 and 20. Okay. Because this one is expecting two integers. Mm -hmm. So that's why I called it this way. Yes, please. Is it because the function you defined above was not static, so you can't call it without uh, creating an instance, and that's why? Okay, thank you very much. That's basically the reason. Because Remember I told you, a static method cannot access a non-static property or method. Sorry? Or even if the same class. Because remember, those can be only accessible if you create an object first. Mm -hmm. So even if they're in the same class? Even if the same class. Mm -hmm. Even if the same class. How can you make them accessible anywhere, inside the class, outside, without creating a math, without creating a class? So you need to also mark them as static. So what is the conclusion here? If you want to see the function. No, no, the conclusion is, the conclusion is, Static method can only access other static method or other static properties. They cannot access a non-static uh, members, the non-static attributes and non-static classes. Yes, please email me. If you send me an email so I can do this. Okay, is clear? So far, method overloading clear. Why do? What's the advantage of using method overloading? Those are the little tricks I focus on on the exams, by the way. Not efficient, because when you say efficient, it's to do maybe with performance, convenience. Yeah. It's more convenient and more easier to learn. Yes? Yes. Because these functions, they do the same thing. Why should I learn multiple names for them? It's more convenient to say, oh, they do the sum, but they, behave, they expect different things. One version expects two numbers, another version expects three, another version expects five. But the goal of those, all those functions, or the behave and the, the role of each of those is exactly the same. What they do, they take the input and sum it and return you the value. Yes? For the static method, is clear? The key idea of it is that you define it at the class level, and then you can use it from the class without creating an instance of the class. It's more convenient for the developer roles, mm -hmm. yeah? But there is a condition here. You can only have static method if it's independent. Mm -hmm. It does not rely on any other non-static attributes or non-static methods. Mm -hmm. It can do its work based on just what you give it as a parameter, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I think, sorry, let me just, I just want to see what is left here, so next time. Constructor, we already seen constructor. The only thing left here, I will explain it, inshallah, next time, is Java doc. It's just a way of generating a nice documentation like this. From your program, you add some comments, and you can, you can generate very nice documentation that looks like this. I will show you this next time, and you will practice this in the lab.
So thank you very much. Uh, please go through these slides and videos I'll be posting. And if you have any questions, post them in the other. I will not come back to this topic. That's it. For me, this topic is finished.